Everything behind us, we're going to look to week 11 in our college football show contest. Our college football show contest is going to have four games. But our first game is number two Clemson is going up to Chestnut Hill to play number 17 Boston College. Clemson 9-0, 6-0 in the ACC, as we know. And Boston College 7-2 and 4-1. Two different teams, but 28th meeting between these two goes back to the 1940 Cotton Bowl. Clemson leads 16-9-2. Here's what you got to know about Boston College, though. Boston College is 0-12 for 12 when they are playing a top five team at home. Trevor Lawrence is slinging the ball. And oh, by the way, he doesn't have to sling it many times because then he'll hand it off as we saw against Louisville, 77 to nothing. But Steve Adazio has brought a toughness to Chestnut Hill and Boston College. They run the ball. A.J. Dillon is now healthy. We'll see how this is going to go. Mark. Hey, don't discount Louisville. They scored 16 points in that game. They put some points on the board. Come on, That's Kevin, give them a little love. I'm sorry. Give I know. A love. I'm a card fan. Give them a little love. What's up? <laughs> but, but if you look at this offense for Clemson, they are unstoppable. They can throw it. They can run it. doesn't matter. They had three running backs over 100 yards in this game. If you look at Clemson in their last four games, they outscored their opponents 240 to 36. Think about that. That's just dominating the opposition, whether it be by the run, by the pass. And if you look at their defense, they've been outstanding on their defense. They've only given up an average of nine points a game their last four games. You look at their defensive coordinator, Brent Venables, has done a terrific job. But playing at Boston College's tough coach, Steve Adazio, always has a physical football team with A.J. Dillon. They're going to run the ball and pound the rock and try to keep away from Clemson. It's going to be closer than most people think, but Clemson still runs away with this by three touchdowns, 41 to 21. Well, I think that Boston College is a very, very difficult place to play. I'm taking the team up there. There's only about 30-some thousand fans, but they're right on top of you, and the students are very, very enthusiastic. But I, I agree with you about Clemson, Mark. You know, they remind me so much of Alabama. They have outstanding quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. They can run the football. They have a good offensive line, but their defense is absolutely outstanding, much like Alabama. So you look at Clemson, but you look at Boston College, the, the fact that uh, – is Dylan going to be able to run the football and how effective is going to Brown, their quarterback, going to be? I look for Clemson to win this football game 31 21. I will not be surprised, though, if it isn't much closer because that is a very hard place to play. Well, you gentlemen have uh, both been up there. Some to watch, some to coach, some to play. But I'll tell you what's going to be tough to play. It's called Bedlam. And he kind of say records are out the window, but Oklahoma State is going to play number six Oklahoma in Norman. You got the Boomer Sooner thing going out there, and then you've got the Oklahoma State mascot, which uh, gives a lot of kids nightmares. But Oklahoma, <laughs> we just said Kyler Murray, 31 touchdowns on the year, but this new, uh, new and improved Ruffin McNeil defense, we'll see how that's going to go. Because Taylor Cornelius, as we saw from Oklahoma State, hey, they beat Texas, and Oklahoma State can also run the ball play a little bit of defense, and the coach has a good-looking mullet. So you never know what's going to happen in Bedlam down there in Norman. Mark, talk to us. I don't know if I've ever seen a good-looking mullet, Kevin, but he does have a head of hair there. <laughs> I had one in the 80s, Mark. It was awesome. <laughs> I got to see that picture. But, but this is but Bedlam, anything can happen with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. The number two total offense and number three scoring offense for Oklahoma. And you're right, Kyler Murray's been getting it done the entire season long running the ball. Trey Sermon was huge last week in their game, over 200 yards rushing in their game. I thought that was big for Oklahoma in their offense. But if you look at this offense at home, they're particularly good at home, and their defense plays much better at home under Ruffin McNeil, even though he's only had three Three shots at it as defensive coordinator, but he's done a decent job. I think that they're going to win this game. They're going to put a lot of points on the board. It's going to be Bedlam. They're going to be under 50. It's going to be 48 to 28, but Oklahoma still wins. I, I think Oklahoma is a very, very solid football team, but I'm concerned about Oklahoma State. You know, they put 31 points on the board in a half against Texas. You go, wow. Then they didn't do anything in the second half. They've lost three of their last four football games. They have lost to Iowa State. They lost to Baylor, and they've lost to Kansas State. Those are not three national powers. So I know they're going to be fired up. They're going to be all excited, but I do not believe that they have a chance against Oklahoma. I look for the Sooners to win this football game 41-24. to 24. It might not be that close. Well, 41-24, to 24, and we're going to see who's going to get right on our contest, the crowdsline.com or on our app, and uh, see what they're going to pick. But I know who I'm going to pick. When you've got number 10 Ohio State is going to East Lansing to play number 18 Michigan State in this 47th meeting, which goes back to 1912. Ohio State leads 31 to 15. They've won two straight. 
but right now Ohio State's uh, looking a little wounded. Their defense gave up 450 yards to Scott Frost, Nebraska. And if it weren't for that fancy onside kick attempt, you all saw that one on TV, uh, you never know how that one would have gone. Dwayne Haskins has thrown 32 touchdowns this year. Um, that has something to say, but you take Michigan State, and as, as uh, Mark D'Antonio said, we're going Lewerke, and Lombardi is out for now. So we'll see how that's going to go. Good defense, good offense. We're going to see how it's go. Mark, talk to us. Connor Haywood, the running back for Michigan State, is going to be the key in this game. Last week in the game, he rushed for 157 yards and two touchdowns. He was dominant in the game. The Michigan State defense is the number one rushing defense in the nation. And there's a reason why, because they fly around on the football defensively. Last week against Maryland, 29 rushing attempts, 26 yards. Just stuffed them, held them to 100 yards total. And if you look at Ohio State's offense, when they struggle, it's when they can't run the football. Well, now they're going to have a test against Michigan State. Old Sparty's just lying in the weeds, waiting for him at home. They're going to stuff the run. They're going to make Ohio State throw the football, and on the road, Ohio State struggles throwing the football. This Ohio State defense has been suspect to the run. Michigan State will run the ball, stop the run, win the game late. Mark Antonio will have a special play in this game, whether it be a reverse, a double reverse, a reverse pass. He always has something up his sleeve, an onside kick. That will win the game for Sparty, and they're going to win this game 27-24. to Stop the presses. I got a scoop for you, Mark. Every coach has a reverse and a trick play. They don't always use it. But you always That's go right. Into they a don't game. always use it, but he does. Go in the game with one. Now, I think Michigan State is going to play an outstanding football game. You know, they have something like 19 starters back, Mark. That they, they went 10 and 2 last year. They were going to be outstanding this year. It's been disappointing when you look at it. I think that they're going to play an outstanding football game against Ohio State. They're at home. I agree with you. Their defense number one in the country against the rest. The thing that bothers me, Ohio State is not a complete team right now, Mark. You look at Ohio State, and there's something missing. The chemistry, the spark, whatever. Maybe it goes back to the fact that uh, Urban Meyer missed the first couple games, could not be there doing two a day. I, I don't know what it is, but this football team is very, very talented. I know Urban Meyer is a great football coach, a great leader, but something's missing despite that. I look for the Buckeyes to prevail, 31-27, a very close game. And other than Clemson and Southern Cal's locker room, I hate Michigan State's locker room more than any other one. They finish third <laughs> on bad locker rooms. <laughs> Could be pink, but we're going to see because uh, Ohio State is uh, you know what? They're looking a little bit stiff right now. Maybe they'll lighten up in East Lansing and take care of business. But I'll tell you who else is looking a little bit stiff right now is uh, pretty much the most penalized team in America, the Florida State Seminoles, are going to Notre Dame. So they're averaging almost 100 yards in penalties a game. So right there, here you go, 100-yard rusher, pretty much the same thing. Who's going to start a quarterback? James Blackman, DeAndre Francois, Willie Taggart, you know, is trying to handed play calling over to his assistant. So we're going to see where this is going to go. But this is a team that I think is uh, – you know what? They can win three games and maybe get in a bowl game. Who knows? Or two games and they can get in a bowl game. But they are going to South Bend, and Notre Dame is on fire, as we said. Mark, your thoughts? This should be one of those games where the Fighting Irish coach, you know, just roll the helmets out on the field, the Golden Doors. It's going to be easy for them. They're going to be about a 30-point favorite in this game. They should roll over old lowly Florida State because Florida State, they've lost the team. Players have quit on Willie Tagger. He's substituting players in the game. There's no chance for Florida State in this game because they're traveling they're playing at Notre Dame. But watch out. These players have a lot of pride. This is a chance for Willie Tagger to tell his team to rise up and play. We want to see what you what you got, guys, because guess what? I'm going to be here next year regardless of what happens this year, and if you don't start playing Florida State football, you're going to be on the bench. That's the one thing coaches have. They've got the power to take away your playing ability and your playing time. Florida State will play hard in this game, but they won't beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame will still win this game 33-27, to Coach, but it'll be closer than most people think. Oh, it will be very, very close, Mark. I, I, I worry about one thing about Notre Dame. This is their last home football game. In my experience, when you're playing the last home football game, the seniors get so sentimental. They get tears in their eyes. They can't see who to block and tackle. I never had a team play real good in the last home football game, and that's what concerns me. Florida State does not concern me. Uh, maybe the most disappointing team in the country this sure. year. You know, for five years, Mark, they had one of the top recruiting class in the country. Now, either yeah. the experts evaluate the recruiting was wrong or the athletes aren't playing as well. I have never seen an offensive line perform as poorly on a consistent basis 
as what Florida State does. Last year, they gave up all kinds of sacks. This year, I think they've given up 27 sacks. They have one of the best running backs in the country, sophomore Cam Akers. Last year, in about eight games, he rushed for over 1,000 yards. He can't even average two yards a carry. So I think that until they get their offensive line straightened away, they have absolutely no chance. Notre Dame wins this 45-14. This is Mark May. Even with Ian Book out with the injury, Brandon Winbush should be able to direct the Irish offense to a victory over Florida State. They're not going to be as prolific passing the football, but they'll be a better running football team. And plus, the Irish defense is a top-notch defense, and they should continue their undefeated streak throughout the season. You're here at 45-14. So uh, go to the app and uh, see if you can just match coaches' prediction. But I'm telling you right now, they're – 17th in rushing defense, Florida State is. We're going to see. And I think for Notre Dame, one thing not to overlook, Notre Dame is one of the few teams in the country that has three games remaining, all of them against teams with 85 scholarship players. They got Florida State, then they got Syracuse and Yankee Stadium, and then they got USC. So this is going to be a, you know, might be a tough test, and there's two ones after that. So that wraps up our Week 11 College Football Show contest. So go to the app, go to thecrowdsign.com, Log in, pick your team, and you know, pick match coach, but more importantly, let us know. Comment. Say, you know what? I beat coach. I beat Mark. And uh, we're going to shout your name out. I, I, that, I won 8-1 and one last week. I only lost because <laughs> of a 33-yard pass with 16 seconds to go where I'd been 9-0. and oh. Well, coach, what do they say? Play to the whistle ends. They didn't listen. So that's how it goes.